you will also see in your horse's window a summary of horses. This will give you a basic rundown of each of your horses and their health conditions, how much they burned, and where their next race and last race was. Also on this page, you can see that you can switch to the horse computer. This will give you a more specific breakdown of each of the horses and you can compare them by using the right and left arrow and you can see the exact health condition of your horse. Although the horse condition only has 10 levels on the page before, here you can see that there's actually 20 levels of health as well as some sub-levels in that level. Now after looking at your horses, it's time to look at your jockeys. But if you notice, you don't have any jockeys. So it's time to go and hire one. In the game, horses run far better if they have an apprentice jockey or a pro jockey. We're going to hire an apprentice jockey. To do that, you go to the stables tab and go to hire a jockey. Here you will see you can hire a pro jockey, which would be using this information, or you can hire a stable apprentice. At this stage, I would recommend hire a stable apprentice. They tend to not be the best, but it's something that you can develop on your own as well as in the game, and they can develop with you. You can have a maximum of two apprentices in your stable at any given time. To hire one, it'll cost you $1,000 to go and find one, but we're going to look at three, jockey, three apprentice jockeys right now, and we're going to go interview them. Coming up here, you'll see we have three different jockeys. Now, beyond the basic information, there's not much that it really tells us. The lightest a jockey can be is 50 kilograms. The heaviest is 65. Generally speaking, you want a younger jockey so that you can have them the longest amount of time possible. So we're going to pick Ilvia, the 19-year-old apprentice jockey. We click the Recruit this apprentice. Now, we're going to go back to our stables page and look at our jockey. Now, when looking at our jockey, you'll notice that they have a prestige, a morale, and lots of other attributes. I recommend going through and looking at all of them to see what you like about your jockey. Now, the maximum amount of time that you can have a jockey is one year, but you don't have to keep them for that period of time. The higher the prestige, generally speaking, the better the jockey. And the higher the morale, as you can tell ours is at reasonable, the better off they work with the horse and follow your directions. Now, if we go to experience and form, we'll see that our jockey does have some basic experience, not much, and it really does take a good amount of time for your jockey to become good. Your jockey has not been in any races and if you go to the apprentice training tab you'll notice that you have 20 credits available. Every week you'll receive credits to give to training and your jockey will learn things as they race. Now you can give them in any way you want but as you will see, having everything at first or last most important really does not help you. You want to have some variety in your horses, in your jockey's conditions. So we'll say that we're going to have our jockey go towards the inside rail. We're going to have and we're going to give another amount to the ability to work with difficult horses. This may be one of the most important attributes. Because if your jockey cannot work with difficult horses, it'll fight and you'll lose efficiency while running. 
as well as a few points to awareness to nearby horses and eagerness to chase horses ahead. You do submit training. Now it'll say, do you want to submit this training? If you're not happy with how you divided things, you can always say cancel and go back and fix it. We're going to say OK. Our jockey has now learned some things and increased in value in some of the attributes. It will take time for your, for your jockey to get to AI in anything. But as you develop, so will your jockey. Also, as your jockey gets better, you'll notice that the prestige will go up, as will their wages when you send them pro. After hiring your jockey, it's time to enter some races. Now, as a warning, most horses at the early stages can't run more than once every two weeks. To go to races, you go to the races tab and go to races homepage. Here you'll see that you have invites to different races. The most important races for you to start off with are your league races, as you can see here. To go to league races, to enter the race, you go to the race meet. Here you will see that there are multiple races and we're in class four. It'll say you can enter a horse into this race. Or if you go to the class three races, you'll notice that there is no tab that lets you enter. And you can also see that this particular race is full. Now to enter a race, let's see which horse would do best in the races. Now as you can see, Harder is a medium runner. Improv is a sprinter, and that would be the one we'd want to put in the sprint. So here, as you can see, it says this is a sprint race. So what we'll do is we'll enter this horse into the race. Now remember, this is Improv. And then you click our apprentice jockey. It says, are you sure you want to book this race? And yes, we do. Now, we want to go back and see what other horses we want to enter into our league races. Now be warned, you only get two league races a week to enter. Also, in league racing, you can only enter horses between the ages of 3 and 10 years old. Now, with us entering that race, you'll notice the race is now full. League races have a maximum number of 15 horses and riders. Now, if we look at the rest of our horses, you'll see that the majority of them are actually pretty even, but fantasy has good experience in short racing, so we're going to enter him into our short race. We do the same as we did for our other horse. We go to next step, add our apprentice jockey, and enter the race. Now, if we go back to the races page, you'll notice that we no longer have invites for this week's races. And that means that the next races that we'll have are the week after. And we will enter those later. Now, if you go to your stable, you'll see that it has more invites and also stakes racing. To start off with, I recommend to not enter stakes races your first week out. It will be tempting, but your horses are better off suited going to league racing. The next thing we should do is we should get some bets for our horses. They're going to be running and training and honestly they'll need some health care to get them through the racing process. To do that you go to stables and then facilities and training. Here you will see the first page that comes up is the training page. 
we have four hours of training that we can use. Also, we have the veterinary page, and we have two hours. Now, if we go back to the training page, it'll tell us who is racing when. And that would be Fantasy and Improve. If we go to Veterinary, we want to give them each at least one hour. Now, honestly, and then apply changes. Honestly, you want to have two hours of training, two hours of help of vets on each course. So to increase that, you just increase it. And it'll tell you how many vets you have and how many extra vets you have. I've added four hours of training, so I'm going to give one more to each of the other horses and one more to each of the horses racing this week. That means we've used all six of our hours. If you do not use your training hours, you get no benefit and you cannot sell them to the public. Training hours, as you can see, we actually can sell one hour to the public, and we have four unused. We want to use all four of them, and to do that, we increase them using the plus button, and then we pick a training. If a horse is racing, you typically want to use a lighter training. Training for C4 classes is done on Friday. As you go up in class, you'll notice that your training hours can be moved to Mondays. And that is the end of video 